to welcome everybody to this latest webinar in Caring.com's Digital Marketing Academy. Our session today is focused on digital marketing strategies for home care agencies to better attract and convert new clients while growing agencies cost effectively. I'm Denise Grob, a marketing director here at Caring.com, and I'm joined by some talented executives at Core Cubed and a Caring colleague, Peter Drube, along with some excellent partner agencies um, that are partners with both Core Cubed and Caring, who we'll introduce in just a moment. Um, please forgive the congestion. I've had a little bit of a cold this week, so my apologies for the sound of my voice and good news, I won't be the main presenter for much of the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we dive in, just a couple more housekeeping items. This is a one-way webcast where only the presenters speak, but you can ask questions at any time during the session. We're going to do a Q&A at the end. We encourage you to ask questions. One of the most uh, common questions we get is whether or not the session is being recorded and if we'll be making the slides available. The answer is a resounding yes to both of those. Uh, we are recording, hopefully you see the red dot on your screen, and we will be sharing the slides with everyone afterward, as well as other resources via email tomorrow morning. And uh, thereafter, you'll find the recording and slides on partners.caring.com in our webinar archive. All right, let me move this forward here. This is a free webinar sponsored by Caring.com. For those of you who are getting to know us and as a refresher for our partners, Caring.com is a leading online resource for senior living and senior care and the number one site for reviews of senior services, including in-home care reviews. Our organization was founded by caregivers for caregivers. Our flagship website, Caring.com, was created and launched in 2007 to equip family caregivers to make better decisions, save time and money, and feel less alone and less stressed in providing senior care to their loved ones. Today, we have a portfolio of websites and referral services that millions of people use to research in-home care, senior living, and more. And now thousands of senior care agencies and senior living communities partner with Caring to reach our highly relevant audience through digital marketing that successfully grows their senior care businesses. Consumers, home care agencies, and search engines alike recognize the credibility and quality of Caring's resources for senior care, such as our High Integrity Reviews Program. We have over 335,000 consumer reviews on our websites, thousands added every month. We're gonna tell you more about that digital marketing strategy later in this presentation. First, I'd like to present our all-star expert presenters today. From Core Cubed, an aging care marketing agency, we have Marissa Snook and Amy Selly. Marissa is the president and CEO of Core Cubed. She has been working in public relations and marketing for over 15 years with a focus on in-home care marketing since 2005. She's also the administrator of Cork Cube's award-winning Most Home Care Marketing Program. Amy is vice president of Cork Cubed. She acts as a strategic marketing partner to Cork Cube's clients, helping them achieve results. She believes that in a competitive market where all businesses have services to sell, it is a company's brand and the way it communicates with its constituents that set it apart from the pack. She also serves annually as a judge for the National Mature Media Awards. From Caring, we have Peter Drube and Denise Grob. that's me. Peter is Caring's Director of Sales and has extensive experience in the senior care industry, including helping to build both the Seniors Choice and Hallmark Home Care, two organizations through which he trained hundreds of home care franchises nationwide. In fact, Peter is a renowned trainer in sales and marketing, with a proven track record and a wealth of practical knowledge, which you'll soon hear for yourself. As for me, I'm a marketing director. I've been at Caring for over 11 years. I have decades of communications experience. I have focused on reviews in particular, 
I was one of the original um, creators of Caring's Reviews program. I helped uh, manifest our review guidelines, and I've been a key player in the program since then. I also am co-creator and manager of the Caring Stars Award and managed a reviews program for a nationwide education website as well. All right, Amy will introduce some of the home care agencies we have today, and then Peter will introduce one of them as well. Amy? Thanks, Denise. Okay, so first we have Mark Montebello, owner of Montebello Home Care in Beaumont, Texas. Mark is a Core Cubed client, and additionally, his agency is a 2021 Caring.com Caring Superstar. And to qualify for that designation, an agency has to receive 10 or more consumer reviews on Caring.com with an overall rating of four and a half out of five stars. Welcome to Mark. We also have Tammy Niles, Executive Director for Live Free Home Healthcare in New Hampton, New Hampshire. She is also a Core Cubed client, and her agency is also a 2021 Caring Superstar. Congratulations, Tammy, and thanks for joining us. And joining us from Toronto in Ontario, Canada, we have Chris Aiken, owner of The Care Company, also a Core Cubed client. Thanks for joining us, Chris. We also have Roy DuBose, who's in uh, Tucson, Arizona with Preferred Care at Home. And Roy is um, uh, one of the leaders in the industry, as you'll hear, in terms of his growth and his use of, uh, of marketing and sales online and then sales offline in order to convert those leads that he receives into clients. And we'll, we'll dive more into his expertise here in just a few minutes. Great. Thank you, Amy and Peter. Um, we have a lot to cover today, as you can see here. Um, we are going to discuss some marketplace realities, digital marketing strategies that'll help you attract prospects, stand out from competitors, and succeed in signing new clients. We're going to cover agency websites, online directories, search, online reputation, and more. Then we're going to open it up for Q&A. There's going to be, spoiler alert, there's a special offer from Cork Cubed at the end. So stick around, don't hop. Um, you don't want to miss it. And then for those who join late, yes, we are recording the session and the slides will be made available afterward. Okay, without further ado, Cork Cubed, take it away. Thank you, Denise. So we're going to start by taking a quick look at some of the statistics from the 2020 Home Care Pulse benchmarking study. Um, what you're looking at is the top overall marketing sources for the home care agencies that took the survey. You can see referrals from past or current clients still top the list, but it is followed by several different sources of digital marketing. And that's what we are going to dig into today. Um, and according to the survey results, uh, digital marketing efforts make up 19.8% of revenue. So that's nothing to sneeze about. <laughs> but you can also see that it's not just one single digital marketing tool that's solving all of these agencies' problems. It really is a mix of efforts. Um, I wanted to quick ask a quick question of the panelists. Where do the majority of your referrals come from? So I guess I can go ahead and start. Um, I, I went through the numbers and tried to figure that out. I kind of I log all the um, all the referral sources that we get referrals from over the years, and I didn't look at it as a percentage of revenue, but I did look at it as a percentage of total referrals, and I was spot on with that. I had I had twenty percent um, from my numbers. Interesting. And Tammy, how about you? Tammy's uh, connecting to audio. Okay, she's still working on audio. Um, Roy, I'd be interested to hear from you as well. So we average probably about 26%. Excellent. Um, we can go to the next slide, Denise. There we go. Thank you for our panelists for chiming in. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Um, I wanted to point out that digital marketing also supports recruitment as well. 
Uh, recruitment is a primary focus of a lot of agencies right now. So wanted to make sure we didn't discount uh, digital marketing for recruitment. And you can see here, similarly to the last screen, that it's not just one silver bullet um, as far as digital marketing. It is a mix of efforts from Indeed to social media, Craigslist, even your own website. It's important to keep digital marketing a part of your recruitment strategy as well as your strategy for finding clients. I'm going to turn this over to Amy to talk a little bit about how your website is involved with your digital marketing strategy. Thanks, Marissa. All right, so today your website is your most important marketing vehicle and the foundation of your internet presence. We know that both consumers seeking home care and caregivers seeking jobs will visit your website at some point during the buying or job seeking process. So your website has to work harder than ever before to engage both of these audiences. And that's because there's more competition than ever before. And that means your site needs to do a couple of things. One, it needs to showcase your unique brand and how you are different or better than the competition. It also needs to have a great user experience. People need to be able to quickly and easily find the information they need to make a decision. And it needs to be continuously maintained. There are a lot of moving parts on websites. And if yours isn't working properly, if it's slow to move, or if there are things that don't work, visitors will quickly move on. And we've asked Mark to be here today because he has put a lot of thought and work into creating his website with Core Cubed. And it's a great example of what to do right if you're building a home care website. So I have a couple of questions for Mark. Um, and one is, Mark, why was it important to you to use original photography on your website? Yeah, I think it's more personal when you can have actual people that you take care of and your own staff on the website. Um, what we do in our clients' houses is, is very personal and taking care of them, helping them, help them with their activities of daily living. And most people, when they do business with someone, I feel like they would prefer to know, like, and trust that business. So I think original photography is a good way to, to help develop that. Yeah, I agree. And and what I really like about your photography is that it it doesn't just show people um, clients using a walker or um, you know clients uh, getting something done for them, but it really showcases the relationship between the caregivers and the clients and the warmth. Yeah. Um, another question for you: Why are trust marks so important on your website? What, what did they convey to your visitors? Sure, sure. I think it, um, the big thing for me is that I feel like it shows that we care about how we perform as a company. We, are, uh, we really value quality. And I think those awards are a representation of that quality. I really like them when people do their homework and they, they do their research on us as a company. Um, I feel like they are more likely to choose us when they come to our site and they see that and they've done their, they've done that homework and, and, they're more invested in us when they when they are in our home when we're in their home and we're doing that that assessment with them great thanks mark okay we're gonna um if we have tammy with us we are going to move on to her website as a case study and now tammy has been working um, with us. Lib Free has been working with Core Cubed for quite a long time. And um, I wanted to ask Tammy, so we worked also to build their website. Um, why is it so important to get those trust marks up high on the homepage? Amy, I think uh, Tammy had to hop off. She was having some internet difficulties. So she's going to call back in. So let's come back to that question at the Q&A for Tammy. How about that? Sure. Okay, great. But is there anything else you wanted to highlight about her website in the meantime? 
Definitely. So one of the things we recommend to um, our clients is to get your license number up high on the home page. Um, it really creates a, a new level of transparency. Um, you want to people to know that you're a licensed company in good standing if licensing is required in your state. And, you know, if they want to go check you out on their own, you're being very transparent about that. Um, and as you can see, um, it's, it's also important uh, for people visiting the site to know that you care about what your customers think. Um, and so they are continuously um, measuring customer satisfaction and employee satisfaction and showcasing um, those awards as well as their caring superstar award which shows that they got great reviews and people have excellent things to say about their services thank you amy you're welcome and now peter is going to tell you about online directories all right so uh strategy number one improve and make sure your website is outstanding. I agree with everything that was just said. Your website is kind of like the skeleton, right? But now we've got to put meat on the bones. Now we've got to get people there. Uh, there's the old, I call it the field of dreams lie. You remember the movie where, you know, the tagline was, if you build it, they'll come. Well, that's a lie. You've got to do some things to get people to your website. Uh, and so the rest of this is, you know, we're going to talk about different ways. Uh, one of the biggest ways statistically is through the online directories like caring.com and others. Um, as you can see in the, in the upper right graph, this is um, a graph of current uh, web visits by channel, right? Traffic on the web by channel. And as you can see, 64%, almost two thirds are, you know, it's completely organic search. It's Google, right? It's the, the highest ranking is on Google. Um, you know, we all talk about social media and it's good to do stuff there and paid search and it's great to do stuff there. You should never turn down any way of marketing, but at the end of the day, let's be real about it and go where the traffic is actually going. Now, by the way, on Google, uh, the latest stats are that, first of all, you know, you have to be on the first page because none of us go to the second page. I, I you know, once in a while we do, but we all know that the latest stats are that 72% of all clicks happen on the front page, whether it's uh, SEO or the ads or the map pack, the local listings. Um, but the interesting thing is 60, 67.6% of all clicks on that front page happen in the top five natural rankings. In other words, they don't happen in the ads, the pay-per-click, they don't happen in the map pack. Yes, there's traffic there. I mean, the other third is, is in those things, but 67.6 happen in those first five Google rankings. Let's go to the next screen. There we go. So how do you get in there? Well, we Google has, uh, you know, there's this economy these days where the online directories, often called the aggregators, right, are what are ruling that. And we can blame Google for that, but uh, it's actually us we prefer it and consequently the traffic goes there and so google ranks them higher so if i'm going to look for a home i don't look for each home's website right i go to realtor or zillow if i'm going to buy flights i don't look for you know i don't go to every uh carrier's website i go to expedia or travelocity or orbits or any number of other travel websites and we do this all across the net right i could name a hundred or more sites that are these aggregator sites where people have the experience of being able to compare and shop and see everything all at once. So uh, important marketing strategy number one is work through the directories, right? So if we go to the next uh, slide, this is self-serving in a way, but it's the, it's the reality. Uh, in senior care, we happen to own the space, right? Caring.com uh, in terms of keyword strings that we show up number one for, far and away the highest uh, number in terms of search visibility, the number of times we're in that top five, uh, three and three and a half times the nearest competitor. By the way, everything on this graph here in green is also us. And Denise mentioned earlier that we have acquired a number of sites and that, um, uh, that those sites also rank highly. And in most searches that we do, we're often two, three, four, five of the top 10 are our sites. Now, I asked Roy to join us here because he has, in my opinion, been one of just the stellar pros in the market at using directory, not just ours, 
Uh, I was chatting with you, Roy, yesterday, and I, I've spilled the beans by putting uh, not quite the exact number on here, but almost the exact number on the slide. What are you converting right now? You get, you get a ton of leads from us and from other online directories. What, what's the percentage of conversion that you have for those leads into clients currently? Um, it's around 52.1%. Yeah, and you can notice he says around, and then he includes a point one, right? This yeah. is Roy, by the way. Roy, uh, Roy, Roy's brain thinks this way. When he was asked off the cuff about uh, his digital marketing, he gave us an exact number, right? One of the things I love about you, Roy, is that it's very exact. And so that goes to the fact that you've built a sales system specifically to handle these leads. Tell us a little bit about that sales system. I'm thoroughly impressed with it because it includes not only the leads themselves, but then your follow-up and even digital follow-up. So tell us what you do when, you know, how do you, how do you convert these leads so highly? So when a lead first comes in, <clears throat> you know, I, I train my sales team to call that lead within a minute to two minutes. That is number one to convert your conversion rate higher. Uh, by getting on that phone and you're calling them within a minute to two minutes, you're beating out anyone else who gets to you first. Also, too, while I'm on the telephone, say, for example, if I'm doing it, um, I call within two minutes. I'm on my computer. I'm talking to Ms. Jones. I'm putting Ms. Jones' information into my database. By the time three to and a half minutes goes by, I'm still talking with Ms. Jones. She has already got an email from me. She already knows our company. Um, I've sent her electronic brochure. Also, she has a text from me. Um, welcome um, her to Preferred Care at Home of Tucson. And what happens then is they see that in front of them because I have found out probably 39% of the individuals when you're calling them, uh, they are in front of their computer or they do have their cell phone. So we like hitting that cell number. We like hitting their email address. And we have found out that increases our uh, converting rate higher than it used to. Phenomenal. And, and you've obviously built that in a, in somewhat of an automated way, it sounds like, where you're able to just put their information in and then it all goes, correct? Yes, 100%. So we have an automation system. The lead comes in, um, the lead, we move it from this bucket to this bucket and whatever that bucket's title, like send, um, welcome in email, send a text, each bucket, we can just move it, drop it, move it, drop it and boom, it goes through the system. And what's really great too, uh, if you talk to Miss Jones and Miss Jones says, well, I need to talk to my husband. If you can call me back at one o'clock, it's very important you call Miss Jones back at one o'clock, not 10 after, not 15 after, because remember, she's already talked to other businesses like mm -hmm. you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that is the that, that is the shopper's world. Even if we if we have the, the you know, the, the fantasy land of, you know, it's just us, right? They, they were referred by somebody to just us. The truth is these days, we all know it because we do the same thing, right? We all look up and nobody is talking to just you. They've all Googled you. They're all looking at everybody else now, uh, whether you got it from an online you know, directory source or whether you got it from the doctor down the street, they are looking you up online. So again, your website matters, but your placement in those directories matters because that's what shows up first in most cases. The last thing that I wanted to highlight that I just love about you, Roy, is, you know, talk to me about, you know, because a lot of people, we have a lot of clients that do phenomenally well from a, uh, from, I mean, even if you convert five or 10% of the leads, you're making really good money, right? Mm -hmm. The cost of the leads versus the, you know, the gross profit margin from those clients makes it a great system. But you are, you're obviously doing a lot more than 10%. Why do you think, what's your attitude about winning business from the digital space how do you take people from online to offline and win that business at a higher rate than everybody else you know uh peter when we first started out i was asking myself the same question you just asked and this was years ago and i said you know i told my wife i said we got to be different there's 167 competitors in this town and i said we have got to move ourselves totally opposite of them we got to come up with a different marketing strategy, uh, verbal and visual. And so what I started doing, I started going out and making contacts with local doctors, with um, home health companies, with podiatrists, with mobile dentistry, with um, anything that you can bring in and partner with you. 
um, where you're different. So if Ms. Jones is getting out of the hospital and Ms. Jones is being released, um, say on Monday, we did a, um, a co conversation with her son, Peter, about what Ms. Jones needs. We spoke with the actual social care worker there at the hospital. We let the son know when she comes home, we, we got this covered. We got PTOT, we got the RN covered for you. We got the in-home care covered for you. Oh, you're, why, and your mother's having a toothache. Oh, you know what? We can have the mobile dentistry. So all these little unique things that you can go out in the community and join forces with and have them in your circle. Yep. It's the way you do run your business. Yeah. You got to stand out and be different from everybody else. Fantastic. Well, again, great job. Uh, you know, one of many clients who are, who are just doing a fantastic job of using online directories and then converting from the online to offline. You've got to get people to raise their hand, but now you've got to work with them and convert. Mm -hmm. So again, build a great <laughs> website and make sure you're in the online directories so that you can be seen in those top five search places on Google. Thank you, Peter and Roy. No, Core Cube will yeah. help us uh, with some other additional digital strategies. That's a great point. Um, we're going to move on to talk about PPC, another digital marketing strategy. And if you don't know what that is, um, it is Google pay per click. So when you do a Google search and you take it, a look at some of the listings at the top of the page, if they have ad written next to them, those are the paid search ads or the Google search pay per click ads. So with search PPC, you're basically paying Google to show your ads when people do specific searches using the keywords that you've targeted in your ad copy. Um, it's a digital marketing strategy that delivers pretty quick results. And if you are in a highly competitive market, it can really be a lifesaver, but it really has to be done right for good results, or it might feel like you're just throwing your money away. Chris, I know that you have worked with a few different companies for your Google pay per click. And I'd love for you to talk a little bit about how your experience with PPC has changed since working with an agency that really understands home care. Thanks, Marissa. Yeah, it's been a dramatically different experience for us. Um, up until August of 2020, we were part of a franchise organization and all of our digital marketing um, was dictated by the franchise or to go through their digital marketing people. And I would consistently get in disagreements with my franchise or about my refusal to take part any longer in the mandatory PPC spend. Uh, and to give you an idea, at that point in time, we were spending about $3,500 a month on pay-per-click ads. And that would then return us about $10,000 a month in business, which at first glance seems good. But when you look at what our gross margin was after we paid the franchisor, we were coming out in the negative for having to do a whole lot more work. Um, when we went independent, um, I decided to sort of revisit pay-per-click ads again, and we hired someone independently. And we had a really similar result, same sort of thing. We were spending more than we were earning every month. Um, this was all before I had met Core Cubed and, and met you. Um, and then when we engaged you, um, we started to have dramatically different results with a much smaller budget. Um, so things are going really well for us right now. I'm still sort of, you know, once bitten, twice shy. And uh, I've been a bit reluctant to put the similar budgets in place again. But seeing the res consistent results that are coming back monthly right now, um, we're looking to increase that spend again. Um, Denise, we can go to the next slide. We're going to showcase some of those statistics that Chris is talking about. So the industry average for PPC conversion rates is about 3.36%. And conversion rates typically measured by how many calls come from the PPC ads and how many contact forms are filled out. And the care company's conversion rate is way above industry average. You can see there at 17.43%. And similarly, their cost per conversion and their cost per click is much cheaper than the industry average. Um, so I think it sounds like, Chris, it's pretty safe to say it really pays to work with an agency that not only understands the ins and outs of PPC advertising, but really understands the home care industry and its target audience as well. 
A hundred percent. And I obviously I'm pretty proud of our website as well. And that was done before I met you also, or I probably would have done my website through Core Cubed as well. But I was chatting with a person who did our website yesterday about how good the pay-per-click results were. And obviously they see the traffic that comes through the site. They have access to our Google PPC as well. And they've looked that over and they're really impressed with the specificity that you guys have put into it um, to really um, you know, target who we're going after rather than just that sort of spray and pray approach that I think everyone else had been using with us. Mm -hmm. I, and I, I love highlighting your website. Go ahead, Amy. Yeah, this, well, even though we didn't do this site, it is a fantastic site. And, um, mm -hmm. and I wanted to weigh in here because if you're going to do a PPC campaign, um, one of the things you want to do is make sure that you're directing people toward a fantastic website. And what I think mm -hmm. is great about Chris's website is that it's bright, it's happy, it's helpful, it's fun, but most importantly, it celebrates life instead of focusing on the terrible things about aging and focuses on, you know, how they help make life better. And, and, and all of those things working together um, makes people want to buy when they get to that website. I agree. Yes. Yeah. And all of those things that you mentioned, Amy, are a part of Chris's brand, which he showcases beautifully on this website. Um, but Chris, why would you say that creating a really compelling brand was so important in terms of attracting clients and caregivers? Because I think that's often a step um, a lot of agencies miss. A few different reasons. I mean, my background is medical device sales. I spent a ton of time working with doctors and spending time in operating room. And one thing I learned early on was like never go in and just start talking about the features of my product, like make it a story, get into that doctor's world and understand what they're facing when they're doing a certain procedure and, and take them literally to the point in the procedure where we know we can solve their headaches. And it's the same thing with families. I want to be able to tell a story about someone's mom or dad as a person, right? And in Canada, it's probably a little bit different than it is in the US. Most of our clients already have an experience of home care through our publicly funded home care system, but they're coming to us because they don't get enough care or the quality is really bad. People are doing cluster care. They're rushing in and out of someone's home for 15 minutes and they're just completing a list of tasks. And we really try to convey to people that Yes, we're going to complete all the tasks that you need to have done, but more than that, we're looking for those one or two things we can bring into or back into your mom or dad's life to help them be happy as they age in place, right? Mm -hmm. in, in, in Canada, our, our healthcare system, they talk a lot about person-centered care. I'm not sure if that's the same in the US, but we talk about the fact that we have a system for person-centered care. It's not just a philosophy for us. It's not just something we strive to do. It's something that we've systematized and we call it life to the fullest approach. And it's really trying to do things like we have a client who's an Air Force pilot and we found the plane that he learned how to fly on at the war plane museum near us and we got him up for a flight in it. And so oh. we're constantly looking to do these types of things above and beyond for our clients. Now, obviously not everyone's going up in a plane that can't happen, but that's the kind of approach we take to every single um, person we have the privilege of providing service to. And that's what we're trying to convey to people. Wonderful. I want to talk about SEO, which is probably the most difficult digital marketing strategy because there's a lot of like a hydra, there's a lot of tentacles to it, uh, but it can work really, really well for agencies. And we've seen year after year on the Home Care Pulse benchmarking study that it's up near the top of ways that people are getting business. So if you want your website to naturally show up high in search results, SEO is the answer. But like I said, improving your SEO, your search engine optimization is very involved. Um, there's dozens and dozens of different ways to improve your search ranking. So working with an excellent digital marketing partner who really understands SEO and home care and, and is transparent, um, not only about what they're doing and how it is working or, or not working, really makes a big difference. You don't want to have a veil pulled over your eyes and just you know trust that somebody's doing something right. 
um, it's good to work with a partner who um, walks alongside you in it. And of course, um, Peter previously talked about um, what, <laughs> what we have online, they call it the barnacle strategy, which is kind of an ugly way to say it, but it really works. Um, getting listed on high ranking directory sites like caring.com, that is another way to get found through SEO. Um, Mark, what has been your experience uh, working with CoreCute on your agency's SEO, or, or is there any advice you would give to the listeners about SEO or working with SEO? So with SEO, I mean, one of the things I like about working with CoreCubed is I've, once we initially got everything set up, I've been having it going for, for years now. And, um, and it's, you guys are a great company, so I, I don't have to worry about a whole lot. You know, you guys handle everything and uh, we're seeing the results. We're getting the, we're getting the calls and it's been, it's been, it's been great working with you guys. Nice. I, I know one of our clients, um, got rid of their uh, sales team and is relying on the SEO now, uh, which is amazing. Uh, that's not for everybody, but <laughs> yeah, actually, can work really well. That's kind of, I mean, we don't really have, we were doing marketing a lot and especially with all the things that are going on with the hiring of caregivers right now, we're depending strictly on SEO and word of mouth and, and we're able to, able to work with that. And Tammy, I see that you've been able to get in. So I wanted to pose yep. the same question with you about um, how your experience working with SEO has been so far. Oh, absolutely. So I would say that, you know, certainly my thoughts mirror a lot of Mark's. Um, truly working with Core Cubed for all these years, at least 10 years now, um, it's, it's not having to think about it. It's having the trust. Um, you know, getting your, your reports, looking at what is happening for us, um, seeing those results, but being able to give something that is so valuable to our business over to another team who just takes it and, and, and understands things that I just don't understand, but knowing that we can trust you to get all that in place for us. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tammy. Absolutely. Uh, blog blogging is one of the tentacles of SEO. <laughs> it's very important with Google to be adding fresh content to your website on a regular basis. This gives Google's robots or their little bots an excuse to go through your website again and re-rank your website. And additionally, people are using longer questions on the web as they're using um, voice and the Alexa and things like that. They're asking longer questions, which we're seeing across our clients are leading to their blog pages, whereas it used to be all of the search would go to the home page or the services page. More and more, their inquiries are bringing up their blogs, um, and and adding blogs regularly. To your... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know if I could hear somebody else or not. If you had a question, um, but Tammy, I wanted to ask you. Uh, you've had a pretty steady diet of blogs on your website for many years. And what would you say that adding regular blog content, you know, why has that been important for your website? Well, it, it shows our community that we're a resource. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we stay up to date with relevant information, what's important to our clients, what's important to our prospective clients. And certainly people will refer to things that they've read about on the blog when they call in and mention that. And they already feel like they're getting something different from, say, a competitor, um, just based off of that, the content. Yeah. Um, Chris, I know you blog um, as well, but I, I wanted you to point out to the listeners the different ways you use your blog. Like, you don't just leave it as a blog. How do you spread that blog content across different um, marketing platforms? Yeah, good question. And interestingly enough, side note, I don't know if you guys even know this, but blogging is why I contacted CoreCube in the first place. This is what I was looking for and then found all of the other services that, that, services that you offer. So for us, the main goal was to increase SEO performance. That's why we wanted to have the blog. Um, the nice thing is being able to post these on our Google My Business listing um, drives traffic that way. And then also through LinkedIn. Uh, weekly, I'm getting between, I'd say, four and 15 new followers for the care company on LinkedIn per week. 
And the only thing that we really do is post these blogs. So they're definitely getting seen and helping us increase our presence that way as well. Nice. And I know you also send the blogs in an e-newsletter format as well. Correct. We really do like that feature as well. And the nice thing is like, um, so our four sort of blogs that get produced for us per month by Core Cubed um, get worked in conjunction with our caregiver of the month, and that gets sent out to our email list every month, which is a really nice feature. Nice. Not everybody consumes uh, digital content in the same way, so it's important to, you know, capture as many different marketing platforms as you can. Now, speaking of different marketing platforms, we're going to talk about social media next, and I'm going to turn it over to Amy. Thank you. So social media is really another super important way today to increase brand recognition in your target market with the people who are seeking care and the people who are seeking caregiver jobs. Facebook is now a pay to play platform. I'll try saying that 10 times. <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's a way to get more exposure. Um, and the way that you do that is to run well-written and well-designed ads, or you can turn your content like your blog posts into ads. Um, so we provide blog content for Live Free Home Healthcare and for the care company. And for Live Free, we turn those into ads that then drive additional traffic to their agency website. Um, What's cool about Live Free is that Tammy's team supplements what we do on Facebook. So we manage the, the blogs and turning those blogs into ads. Um, but Tammy, I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit more about how your team uses social media. Sure. Um, so we really use that, again, as a way to become you know, trusted in our community. We, we celebrate our caregivers' um, accomplishments, birthdays, anniversaries, and we find that our caregivers, they engage a lot with us on social media. And then other people looking in say, wow, that looks kind of like a fun place to work and look at the great relationship they have with their caregivers and look at that their employees are valued. So for us, we, we have a lot of fun with social media. Um, we talked before about our digital sign that we have here that will, you know, put messages up and we get lots of comments from the community and we'll take pictures of that and throw it up on social media when we're congratulating someone and, you know, the caregivers love knowing that their, that their name is up in lights, as they say, and especially when they see it on our Facebook page. Yeah, so K Tammy is um, posting uh, wishes for happy birthdays to caregivers, um, congratulating them on their work anniversaries, um, posting pictures of company outings, and um, posting about caregiver of the quarter. And I think this really helps with recognition and retention of her caregiving team. All right, thank you, Amy. So we talked about websites, we've talked about blogging as content on websites, we've talked about SEO and how difficult it can be, and how online directories are dominating search and are a great way to get found. Now I want to tell you about online reviews, because that is definitely a key strategy. The vast majority of consumers nowadays are using these online reviews to evaluate businesses before moving forward with the services. And that includes home care. It's helping them sift through their options. They are perusing your online reputation before they're expressing interest, before they're returning your calls, before they're agreeing to an in-home care assessment. Um, and after they're engaging after they've seen enough reviews to persuade them to do so. Even if they get recommended by a doctor, or a friend, or a hospital discharge plan, or some of those offline referral partners that Roy mentioned, they're still going to turn to the search engine to read the reviews about the suggested home care agency. And when they do, they're going to find stand reviews as a standard part of the search results. It's helping agencies rank higher and stand out from their competitors. Google hosts its own reviews program, but even they recognize how valuable these consumer insights are on other websites and show reviews from the web as a module in search results. And when it appears, it doesn't appear for every business, but when it does appear, it's based on a business name search, by the way, a consumer goes to Google, types in the business name, 
This appears on the left-hand side. Um, and when it does, caring is in that module 90% of the time and often in the very first spot. So you need to have consumer reviews in multiple places online with Google and caring among the top sites for those in market uh, for in-home care services. At Caring, we've studied use of our website. We, we use third-party platforms um, to watch users of our website, measure clicks and more. We know they uh, when they're searching in an area, they click on the listings with reviews, they skip those that don't have them. So if you don't have reviews about your agency yet, you're likely losing business to your competitors that do. The majority of boomers and seniors are online nowadays. They're using smartphones, tablets, social networks, uh, just like Amy just showed you with Facebook. This is particularly true for the adult daughters and daughter-in-laws that are researching senior care for their elderly parent or spouse's parent. There's a search engine uh, company called Bright Local. They've surveyed online consumers in the US and Canada for over five years. In every recent study, they found that the vast majority of people are, will trust an online review as much as a personal recommendation. In 2019, they also spliced the data for, by age demographic. And then here I'm showing you US adults age 55 and older, 71% are reading online reviews when researching local business. They're reading an average of seven reviews. It's not just one review that convinces them an average of seven. So that means they're reading a lot more. Um, and I was surprised half won't use a business that has an overall average rating less than four stars. So not only do you have to get online reviews, you got to get the great online reviews. You got to get your happy customers to post their online reviews. Do you know what's being said about your agency online? This is really a significant way to grow your business and it could be why you're having trouble reaching prospects and not getting the biggest bang for your digital marketing buck. Caring has a lot of resources to support agencies in building your online reputation. Uh, we'll have our contact information at the end, but it's reviews at caring.com if you'd like to learn about those services. Some of you may be skeptical. You may think, oh, well, I'm biased. I wanted you to hear from home care consumers directly. Um, we screen all the reviews for our site before they're published. We want to host only real reviews from real clients and their family members. Here's what these folks are telling you. Some are new to researching home care. They weren't sure who to call. The reviews helped them. Many choose an agency based on their customer reviews. Home care agencies are compelled to share their positive feedback about home care services. They're excellent. And when asked to do so, particularly during the pandemic, with the increased use of the internet. So it's not just, they don't just magically appear. You have to ask for online reviews. And reviews, uh, they validate that, uh, so the consumers also use, after they've read the reviews, they've hired you, um, they come back and post and that it validates that the reviews they read um, match their own experience, as you see here with the Montebello Home Care Agency's review um, that they received that now they know why this agency has such a great rating. This is powerful insight, and I hope you'll heed the call to build your online reputation and use this strategy in your digital marketing and business growth. When you do, it can lead to Service Excellence Awards. You saw earlier mention of the Home Care Pulse Best of Home Care Award badges. Um, those were based on consumer feedback that Home Care Pulse collects by phone. Caring has a service excellent award based on public facing consumer reviews, and we call it Caring Stars. It was the first of its kind when initially launched in 2012. It's now highly coveted, very popular. About 500 agencies nationwide earned this for 2021. And spoiler alert, we're doing some preliminary analysis for 2022 now, and we're seeing even higher numbers of qualifiers. There's a whole set of criteria. Amy mentioned a couple earlier. We have a whole package of criteria that we use. We set that we purposefully set the bar high so that this really does signify the best agencies nationwide. Stay tuned for that announcement in December. There's lots of buzz, uh, media coverage. We give free marketing and PR to the winners. Um, we have two superstars on our call today. Superstars means they've won the award in three or more years. Really fantastic. So if your agency is a superstar, 
really good that you're highlighting that on your website, social media, and it's already highlighted on your caring.com listing. So if you want to get recognized in this program, contact reviews at caring.com. We have to throw this cautionary tale slide in here. Just as a quick reminder of some things not to do or what doesn't work. Um, we, you can't expect Facebook to work as it has in the past. Um, you have to get shares and comments on your posts for them to be seen by more of your followers. So just having someone follow you is not enough. Um, and a great way to be seen by more people or to get more of those uh, comments and shares and likes is to pay to play, pay the Facebook for a boost or an ad. Um, don't work on your SEO once and expect it to keep delivering results. It's something you have to keep doing ongoing. It's like exercise to stay in shape. Um, don't try to do it all yourself. Um, I, you have enough going on for you in home care. <laughs> Having SEO, PPC, social media, all of that really takes regular focus and synergy to be effective. So get help with some of that. And of course, we recommend that you work with a marketing firm that understands the home care industry. If you don't, you're just going to end up having to educate them and spend all of this time back and forth and your results are going to be subpar. And with reviews, um, Denise was saying how important they are. Don't just expect them to pour in. Ask for them regularly cultivate those reviews because they are so important. Um, and we can go, yeah, to here. This is our gift to you. Uh, grab that bit.ly link and you can download our tip sheet for free. This is uh, the Home Care Digital Marketing Agency Owners Share Their Winning Strategies tip sheet. So grab that link and download it. We're going to make that available in the email we send all of you tomorrow morning with links to the slides and the recording. And um, I just wanted to thank you very much, Core Cube, for making that available. And I just wanted to add, uh, Marissa talked about you have to ask for reviews. I mentioned it too. Caring did a whole webinar on this because we hear from home care agencies, they don't know how to ask, they feel a little uncomfortable. So I did a whole webinar on how to ask for reviews, scripting, personas of um, potential reviewers and how to approach them and more. So um, that will be available to you in the follow-up as well. All right, we have reached Q&A and we have enough time. So Amy, let's start with the question you posed for Tammy since that didn't get to get answered earlier. Sure, um, well, I have a, actually I have a different question for Tammy. Okay. Um, what, what, a, what should a home care agency look for in a digital marketing partner? Oh, that's a good one. Um, you want somebody who, who does it all. Working on our website, our search engine optimization, the, the maintenance, the blogging, everything, everything together. Um, looking for a partner that is responsive. That is the one thing I know you guys have heard me say that so many times. You are, you've always been so attentive. We've been able to give you a little, you know, just a little nugget of what we're looking for, and you take it and you turn it into something bigger for us. You know, we, we might have the ideas, but not always have the time to invest. And you're very, very responsive. Um, and you've just met every one of our needs, like I said, for over 10 years. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, and we got a question. Uh, this is for Core Cubed. Um, how you mentioned original photography for the website earlier in the presentation. How do you handle photo releases to be able to showcase that original photography? Um, a photo release is actually pretty simple, and um, if you contact us, we can share an example of one. You definitely want to have um, clients and caregivers who are going to be in pictures sign one of those and have their permission. And also, once you get the photos back from the photographer, you know, make sure you're showing them which photos you want to use and getting their permission to use those um, photos that you've chosen. 
Great, thank you. And then I got a question here about reviews. Um, the question was, can the agency just copy reviews um, from caring to their website? Um, and if we replace the word caring with Google, Facebook, Yelp, um, the answer is the same. Each of the reviews platforms has copyrights and specific review reprint requirements. So no, the, um, you can't copy and paste them, but if you contact reviews at caring.com, we can um, talk to you about some other strategies and the reprint guidelines. The reason being is consumers can, it's their content. They can retract and change that content at any time. So the, and additionally, other consumers want to see that content on the third party site. It's okay to excerpt or mention it that you have great reviews, like see our reviews on caring.com, but to just wholesale copy and paste that content is a big no no. Um, and some of the sites will even penalize your profile. We don't do that at caring, we'll just follow up politely. Um, but definitely contact reviews at caring. I could talk to you more about that. And our caring stars winners get a free widget for their website that um, highlights them as best in their state and links right to those reviews. So it's super easy. We provide the code and digital assets for that. So there's other ways around that to be able to showcase your positive feedback on your website. Uh, we got a question I'd like to pose to Peter because I, he's such a pro um, at this and he's done entire webinars on this. Um, when you've got this, and we talked a little bit about it with Roy too, so um, Roy and Peter may together answer this, but when you've got this online client, right, pot potential client, um, should you allow them to interview your caregivers or should you just provide information that your caregivers are fully trained and don't allow them to dictate to you? What, what, how would you approach some of the questions that you get from those online prospects to move them forward? Let's start with Peter. Okay, so, um, so uh, let's define what that means to interview the caregivers. So uh, we always uh, offered, so we are the experts, right? We, we come in with a care plan and we're gonna do that care plan uh, for you. And uh, within reason, we will bring, uh, again, you know, assuming we have the staff, I know right now it's, you know, staffing shortages are creating a problem, but assuming we have the staff, we will, if it's, if it's a request, bring in uh, a limited number, and that's the key, um, two, three, to choose from those. Um, and we always uh, offer that if they were asking. In most cases, though, it was not something that we offered, meaning that uh, they had to ask for it, because we are going to match based on our expertise in matching caregivers. And they always have the ability to, you know, say we don't like a caregiver and, and replace that caregiver, and we will do that. Uh, but um, when asked, uh, uh, provided that we had the staff, we we were able to uh, have them interview a couple. Um, Roy, I, I don't know what you're doing right now, but uh, how are you handling that? So there's a couple of ways. Um, if they're really headset on interviewing the employee, what I will do, I will get couple of employees together, I'll do a Zoom call with the family. Mm -hmm. And uh, they get to ask the questions to the caregiver, get to get that form of that a warm, fuzzy feeling going with them. 99% um, of the time that does work. Uh, the other, say, 1% of the time, they want to visually actually see that caregiver face to face. And what I always fall back on is, of course, is COVID. And I let them know, look, you are not um, a client of ours at this time. And my a workman's comp and my insurance will not cover them coming into your home. Mm -hmm. And they understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Very good points. Very good point. That's great. Thank you. I, I think just to put a cap on that, Denise, just go back to the fact that if you're presenting yourself well, as Roy does a fantastic job of that in the beginning, and you're and you've got all these digital assets to back you up, including all the reviews and a great website and great listings and all that kind of stuff. And then you design a fantastic care plan. 99% uh, of the, I guess, the credibility has been established. And so now they're looking to you to be the expert in assigning the right caregivers. Obviously, if you totally go out of left field and assign the wrong caregiver, that's a problem. But yeah. if you're doing your job, it really doesn't come up as often as you might think. We, we didn't, 
we never got that many requests to do that, but right. Yeah. To Roy's point, when, when necessary, we would let them do it. And I love your, your approach, Roy, in, in doing it uh, over zoom. That's even better. Yeah. That's great. Um, and I, we got a question, a couple questions I'm going to combine um, for Core Cubed. And it was spoken to a little bit during the presentation, but, um, and we're getting close on the hour. Um, but Core Cubed, can you quickly explain? I, I know this is a huge question, so do your best. Um, <laughs> I know you talked about the value of using an agency that has home care experience. But there was a question also about the pros and cons of a local versus a national agency using an agency in your local area and whether or not the agency's um, healthcare industry experience, how that measures against consumer services, retail, leisure, et cetera, um, when it, in the perspective of a home care. I guess this agency is looking at how do I pick the best agency? Yeah, I think what is remarkable about Core Cubed is that we were a national agency, so we work with home care agencies across the country. Um, we work with all different types of home care agencies, from those that offer just private duty to those that also offer home health and hospice. Um, and we see the trends, so we can um, often watch trends that are happening for a client in one part of the country and predict that that trend's going to move to another part of the country. You know, we get to see what's working everywhere. Um, and, you know, that that allows us to help people in different areas. So we can help you with um, information about an agency in another state that's that's really working well. Thank Would you, you so much for that. Yeah, Marissa, would you add anything to that? Um, I think the only thing to add is that people are not products and marketing for people and a people-centered service. That's why it's different. Well, yeah, and I, 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 what I would add to that is that aging is not something any of us want to do so far. And so people put off looking for home care and it's a very unique um, buying experience. And we've got a ton of experience in how people approach that. Mm -hmm. That's great. And I would um, additionally, I 100% agree with that. Over the 11 years I've been a caring a lot of consumers have come to us um, and gotten educated about what's available in home care. Peter was part of the original um, trainers of our family advisors as we rolled out those referral services and education for consumers by phone. Um, mm -hmm. So he could now, that as well. I will correct one thing though. Uh, Amy, I don't know about, I, I think Roy, Chris, myself, Mark, we're all in, in the court. We built our home care agencies because we look forward to aging and having to use those same agencies. So we're looking forward to our caregivers ourselves. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, that's good. That's very forward thinking. And I, <laughs> I, I appreciate that. <laughs> Okay, great. So um, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We're a little bit over, but I want to summarize. We've covered a lot of information. And by the way, anyone whose question we didn't get to will follow up with you afterward. Um, but we covered that in today's marketplace, you can't ignore digital marketing to grow your home care business. The winning strategies are going to vary. You need to learn what's driving the most rapid growth and highest ROI for comparable agencies. Online reviews are critical and they can be leveraged in multiple ways to help you stand out, including service excellence awards. Both Caring and Core Cubed have resources to support agencies in optimizing and managing their digital marketing. Um, Peter, Marissa, Amy, do you have anything else you would add here or have I captured your thoughts? I, I think you did a great job, Denise. Yes. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Great. Really appreciate everyone taking time today, particularly our agency owners that shared their uh, business experiences. I know um, you are super busy people <laughs> and have businesses to run. So thank you for taking time out of your day to do this. Huge appreciation for that. Um, here is how to contact the Core Cube team. You're also going to be prompted afterward um, for uh, we have a little survey we want you to take. How we do, um, and you can opt in to be contacted by Core Cube. This contact information will also be available via email after this session. 
here's how to contact Caring to be a partner. We have a sales team, we have a reviews team. We also have an entire industry website um, with lots of resources. Um, Peter even does sales and marketing training for home care agencies on our website. So um, really thank you for your time today. Before I close out the session, any final thoughts from any of our panelists? No? Okay, great. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it all. Have a great day. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Thank you.